Alan Wake is a troubled writer whose wife, Alice, has coaxed him into a woodland getaway with the hidden intent of solving his writer's block. A dark presence living on the island has other plans for the couple as it kidnaps Alice and steals a week of Alan's life. He must trek through the dark wilderness to find answers and save the princess. This story is pretty formulaic, and like most mysteries, it's not nearly as interesting once you know the whole plot as when you're in the thick of it looking for answers. The direction of the cutscenes is pretty excellent, but the pacing is way off. You get the feeling that there wasn't enough story to make a full game, so the plot wastes a significant amount of your time, first by trying to convince you that a kidnapper has Alice, even though we've seen in the beginning that there are darker, more supernatural forces at work, and later by trying to convince you that Alan has been crazy the whole time and that none of these things actually happened. Neither plot twist actually works, and by the time you're past them, the story has not changed one bit. None of the characters are very realistic or likable. Alan is constantly raging at anyone and anything around him, including his wife before her disappearance, and supporting characters are nothing more than stereotypes or placeholders to drive the action. This is true of many titles in the horror genre, but Wake is particularly guilty of it. Graphically, the game is impressive and has held up well over time. Characters look like alien robot monsters, but the lighting and textures are pretty fantastic. The voice acting is also very good, and sound cues are nice, but sometimes give away surprise attacks from baddies. The forest sometimes looks cool, but if you do enough exploring, you start to get tired of the sort of monotonously dark landscape. While exploring, there are tons of things to pick up, but not all of them impart a sense of reward. There are radios, televisions, coffee thermoses, and manuscript pages. They're cool to experience and flesh out the universe a little bit, but the common denominator between all of these except the thermoses is that the player must stop the game to appreciate them. It may impart some sense of authenticity, but having to pause the game to read manuscript pages or stand still in one spot to watch a television sucks a lot of the immersion and sense of immediacy out of the game, and these things are very important to a horror game like this one. The gameplay is absolutely excellent, and with the aim assist of the flashlight and survival assist of the dodge moves, combat becomes an open-ended sandbox experience where the game knows that it's best to simply throw enemies at you in an open field and let you decide how to handle them. The flashlight can be used to kite enemies very effectively, and by the end of the game, you have such a powerful arsenal that if you were ever scared before, you won't be anymore. In that vein, the game really is never scary at all. It has a nice brooding sense of ominous intent from the dark presence, but the enemies are always shouting comical absurdities, and it's hard not to be aware of the complete and total lack of danger in between fight scenes. The fights themselves, however, sell the game well enough on their own. So well, in fact, that the rest of the game seems like a placeholder built around combat sequences. Between dead-end plot digressions and myriad forced walk-and-talk scenes, a game that takes less than 10 hours to beat on a normal difficulty would probably have been less than 5 if it weren't padded out in such a way. Despite its flaws, like excessive product placement, Alan Wake is a legitimately enjoyable experience, and its novel combat mechanics seem ready to stand against the test of time. I give this game an 8.5 out of 10.